Please welcome your host for the afternoon, Chris Bisa. Thank you so much, Jenny. And thank you everyone for being here tonight. I am an author and an editor. And sometimes my work feels a bit small. Teaching people how to use a semicolon besides a winky face. Teaching people about the importance of the length of a dash. These are important details in my world and maybe not everybody is in that interested in this. Not everybody might be interested in the fact that expressions like to be phased come from old Wild West cowboy, cowboy trivia. People might not all be excited about the fact that the word go hijacked its past tense, went, from an entirely different verb. And that's why go and went have nothing to do with each other. The things you think of at 3 a.m. Not all of us will be fascinated by the fact that an ampersand, that squiggly little mark that means and, was once the Roman word, excuse me, Latin word, et, E-T, and its earliest known use is in graffiti on the wall of ancient Pompeii. But this is my space, and this is where I'm fascinated, and you're here too, so you must have some small fascination in the same area. We live in an amazing moment in history today because we might not all be authors or wordsmiths or storytellers, but we are all writers. We write notes in our kids' lunchboxes. We write notes on social media. We write resumes. We write business emails. We're all writers. And what is more important than communication? Connecting people. And that's what this show and my book are all about. Words can shape history and they can shape lives. Give me liberty or give me death. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I have a dream. I love you. You're hired. These are all important phrases and the words we use every day Show the world how we want to be understood. So how do you want to be understood? Hopefully well. Now, today I'd like to introduce you to Grammartopia. Why Grammartopia? Because wouldn't the world be a little bit closer to perfect if we at least had a little bit better grammar? I think so. Today I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful panelists who have joined me today. We have Jennifer Delamere, Sarah Schaber, and Carl Norgan, and I'm gonna give each one of those, them, a moment to introduce themselves. I'm Jennifer Delamere, and I write historical romance set in Victorian England, and um, I live in the Raleigh area, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, my first uh, book in this series, if you're a Gilbert and Sullivan aficionado by any chance, um, it takes place backstage at the original production of HMS Pinafore oh, cool. in 1879. Oh, so cool. I got to throw in my love of history. I'm a massive history geek. And um, so, and I uh, edit for, uh, I edit nonfiction materials for my day job. So I'm excited to be here. Sarah. Um, I'm Sarah Schaber. I write mystery and suspense fiction. I've written 13 books, which is why my thumb is in the condition that it's in. <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm writing the seventh book in my Louise Purley World War II mystery series. Hi. I'm Carl Norgren. Chris's book subtitle is For Those Who Are Curious and Confused. I need to buy your book. I'm curious as to how this is going to work out this afternoon. <laughs> and I'm confused as to why I was invited to be a part of it. Uh, <laughs> But I've written a few books, uh, some novels that come out of the time I was a fishing guide in Northwest Ontario as a 15-year-old kid with the Jewish Indians. I've taught for 14 years at Duke University classes on how to be creative, and so we focus on that as well. And this is a lot of fun. Thank you. And today, we're going to talk about... Yes, grammar. That word that makes so many people run right past that sign into the rest of the library because they do not want to be in this room. We're going to talk about grammar not because it is intimidating, but because it is essential. 
where no one's going to hopefully fall asleep in this room, as you might have memories from your sixth grade classroom. No one is going to be calling out grammar Nazis or anything like that. It's not about anger, it's not about boredom, it is about human communication and having some fun. So today we're gonna to have four rounds. And our first round is going to be a true or false round. Each of our contestants has a tablet where you can write down true or false. And just be warned, there are also a couple questions for you. Later in this round, um, question number six and eight will be audience questions. And if you get one right, if you volunteer and get one right, you can give your point to whoever you want. So if people brought fan clubs, this is your moment to shine. All right. So are my contestants ready? Ready. Fabulous. Okay. True or false? Both folk and folks are plural, and there's no singular version of that word. Both folk and folks are plural, and there's no singular form of that word. Everybody ready? One, two, three, turn. True, false, oh. true, true. Oh. <laughs> there is no singular form of that word. Does that annoy anyone else? Again, these are the 3 a.m. <laughs> thoughts that wake me up and say, wait a second, that does not make sense. One does has an S, one does not. You can talk about the folk <clears throat> in a kingdom. You can talk about the folks in this room. It's always plural, always plural. Okay, number two. How's our scorekeeper score doing? Awesome, thank you. Number two, spilled, with the E-D, and spilt, with the T, are both acceptable spellings. Spilled, with an E-D, and spilt, with a T, are both correct. I love it when I'm hearing murmurings from the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear their points of view just a little bit louder. Okay, if we're talking about Spilling the bean or spilled beans, or if we're talking about spilt milk, are both of those correct? Yeah. One, two, three, turn. True, 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 true. Yeah. Fabulous. Good job, everybody. Yes, the fr the original form was spilt with a T, as in spilled over, <coughs> over spilt milk. If you're ever using that expression, do use the T. That was the original form in 1958 with Jonathan Jonathan Swift. But if you're talking about someone who spilled the beans, also correct, because that was first used in 1908, later form of the word. Talking about politicians, 1908, 2017, not much has changed. <laughs> um, okay, number three. To toe the line, to toe the line, derives from nautical history, pulling the ropes of sails. To toe the line, it derives from nautical history, pulling the ropes of sails. Spell it. Tell ah, you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is a big hint. Okay, so does it derive from nautical history? True or false? False, 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 smart panel, correct. Often people think Towing the line having to do with T-O-W, but to tow the line is actually T-O-E, as in you're putting your toe up to the line when you're beginning a race. That is the origin of that expression, and it's miswritten all the time. Great work. Okay, how's everyone doing? Yeah. Doing all right? Good. Okay, good. I have every confidence I will catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I did, There's plenty I did of time. <laughs> all right, number four, the singular they. The singular they, when you're using they, when you're talking about just one person, has been used as far back as, of, as the King James Bible. The singular they has been used as far back as the King James Bible. In the grammar crowds, this is a very contentious question. Are you allowed to say they, or are you allowed to say at the end, always he or she? Can you just say they? Is it allowed? So, panel. Singular they has been used as far back as the King James Bible. One, two, three. That's enough. False, 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 true. Oh. True. And for everyone who I has ever been told that. by their elementary school teacher, this is wrong, it is, this is the way it has always been, 
You can tell that grammar teacher. Actually, there's a big history with the singular they being allowed. King James Bible, Jane Austen. There are a lot of really big people in history who have allowed it. So while many people argue for always saying he or she, singular they, it's actually OK. OK, one more question before I toss this out to our audience. There is a mistake in Faulkner's famous title, As I Lay Dying. There is a mistake in Faulkner's famous title, As I Lay Dying. I need to have Jeopardy music. <laughs> do, 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 do. I told you not to ask me that question. All right, there is a mistake in Faulkner's famous title, As I Lay Dying. What do you think? True, true, true. You are all again correct. The funny thing is, though, it's not the word lay. That's absolutely fine. You could say that Addie in that novel was talking about laying, because it could be past tense. I'm OK with that. The difference is that little tricky word, as. There's a difference between when you use as and when you use while. Technically, that title should be while I lay dying, because as is used when something happens quickly, as I walked into the room, as I put down my pencil. If you're using while, it's a longer process. In the book, Addie takes a long time to die. <laughs> she dies, and then even after she dies, she's still talking. <laughs> so technically, that novel should be while I lay dying. I'm OK with that lay. Good job, panel. OK, I have a question for the audience. Does anyone want to be brave? Does anyone want to be brave or someone wants to hear the question first? <laughs> someone wants to hear the question first. This is going to be a true or a false question, so obviously if someone gets it wrong, that doesn't mean someone else then gets to shout out the correct answer <laughs> um, and then give the points to someone of their choice. So I'm just going to shout this. Um, I'm not going to shout it. I'm just going to give you this question. First person to call out true or false. If you get it right, you can choose who gets the point. So when Vito Corleone or Tony Soprano Talk about making someone sleep with the fishes. Is that correct? Or excuse me, I guess to make it a true or false question, they are using the proper form of fishes. True or false? I say false. False. It's actually true. Mm -hmm. When you talk about fish versus fishes, everybody think it's kind of this awkward sounding thing. But if you were talking about not just a bunch of goldfish, but a bunch of different species of fish. It would actually be fishes would be OK. Obviously, either form is correct. But if you're talking about fishes, as long as you're talking about multiple species, and I'm assuming whatever river people are being dumped into in these movies, there probably is more than one variety of fish. So I'm going to say I call it OK. Thank you very much for being our first volunteer. OK. Anybody else for the audience? OK. While think and thing are both commonly used in this expression, the correct version of the idiom is you have another thing coming, not you have another think coming. True or false? false. I'm hearing a false here. Correct. Sir, right here. Before I go on, who would you like to give your point to? Yes. Sarah. Sarah. Oh. Extra point for Sarah Schaber. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Correct. Judas Priest music lovers was wrong. It's not you have another think come or it's not you have another thing coming. You have another think coming. Sounds slightly awkward, but that is the original. Good job, sir. Thank you. And our last true or false round question for our panel. The only time you'd use the word insure with an I instead of ensure with an E is when you're talking about insurance. The only time you use the word insure with an I instead of ensure with an E is when you're talking about insurance. True or false? <laughs> All right, one, two, three. False, false, true. There's your chance to catch back. True. Oh, all right. Yay. Anytime you are telling anyone about 
Insuring something with an I, it is always, always related to insurance. Beautiful. Well done, Jennifer. I'm glad that's true because I tell people that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So round of hands, or hand, yes, for our panel. Grammartopia came to be because I wanted to find a way to make grammar accessible. Not something to bore, not something to make people angry. And it all came about because of a blog that I started in 2012. And I was not seeking anything big with this blog. I was just trying to talk to my editing clients and family and friends about there really is a difference between further versus farther, folks. <laughs> and there really is a difference this is one of my favorites, between emulate and emulate. There's a big difference there. Between uninterested and disinterested. Both words are legit, but they have very different meanings, and people mix these things up all the time. So I started off this blog. It was just for fun. It didn't have any grammar jargon in it. And around 100 blogs, people keep saying, when's the book coming? And I laughed really hard, and I said, this is just something that I'm having fun with right now. And then people kept pressing, when's the book, when's the book? So I self-published a version of what became Get a Grip on Your Grammar in 2015. And again, I just put it out because people kept saying, put it out, put it out. And then this self-published little ebook began being used in college classrooms. <laughs> and then this self-published little ebook, suddenly I had this connection request on LinkedIn followed by an email, followed by a phone call of a fairly major dot com who wanted to purchase the rights of my blog and my ebook. And I said, huh, maybe we have something here. Shortly thereafter, I began working with the wonderful Lisa Hagen, my literary agent at the back of the room. And a week and a half after I signed with Lisa, I had my book deal with Career Press for Get a Grip on Your Grammar, 250 writing and editing reminders for the curious and confused. Now, I wanna give some freebies here because I'm not the only one up here who is an author. Our wonderful panel has brought some books that they are willing to give away. So this is a moment I'm gonna pass around a clipboard and we're gonna have a door prize at the end. So if anyone would like to sign up um, for that, we will do a drawing at the end. Could my lovely assistant? <laughs> I forgot to bring some, but I will mail them to whoever. Oh, thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Absolutely. So we have books from our entire panel. So you can, there's a little sign up for that going around the room. At the end, we will have time for grammar questions, which really puts me on the spot. <sighs> the funny thing about writing a book about grammar is that People tell me all the time when they send me emails or even text messages, they get really nervous. And I keep telling them, do you realize how nervous I am? How can, I'm the one who literally wrote the book on grammar. Oh man, but that's okay. Nobody is perfect. And I think that is where so many people come into this equation, thinking there is perfection and they are going to be reprimanded severely if they use that semicolon in incorrectly. It's about trying and doing our best. And Get a Grip is that resource for everyone who wants to do better. All right, round two. Oh, the difference right now is the audience. Good point. Okay, so right now we have Jennifer at four points, Sarah at five points, Carl at four points. It is anybody's game. Okay. So in this round, we're making it slightly harder. I have A versus B, so you can just write down A or B as your answer. Question number one. If you were working on a new story or a new idea of some sort and you want to expand upon your initial ideas, do you want to A, flush out your ideas or B, flesh out your ideas? Do you want to flush yeah, out? I always assume it's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> or flesh out. All right, one, two, three. 
B, 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 woohoo! Everyone knows it. Flesh out is the correct answer. It's like a skeleton. Maybe you have the bones of an idea, but then you need to give it some meat. You need to flesh it out. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about flushing something out, obviously you're thinking of the toilet. Not what you want to do. Or maybe you're thinking about going hunting and you're sending that dog to flush out some sort of creature. Unless you're scaring your ideas out of hiding, let's stick with flesh out. Okay, fabulous. Number two. Should you teach your dog to lay down, A, or B, lie down? All right, one, two, three. B, 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 woohoo! Yeah. Lay, excuse me, lie down. Uh, <laughs> Good. Lie down. If the dog is going to lay down a bone, that would be different. But if your dog himself, the subject, is the one who's doing the action, lie down. Okay, number three. If plans are changed and you make, end up making a different decision, are you A, doing a 180, or are you B, doing a 360? <laughs> I know, the few with math expertise, they got this one. All right, A doing a 180, B doing a 360. What do you think? A, 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 fabulous. We have mathematicians on the panel. We're good. Doing a 180, obviously, is moving from here to here. If we are doing a 360, we are going to get wrapped in a mic cord and be facing the exact same direction. Which is true about half the time. Uh, this is true. <laughs> but at least we should be saying 180. <laughs> All right. Holiday card season approaches. When you write Happy New Year from the Joneses, or insert your family name here, should there, A, be an apostrophe in your family name, or B, not have an apostrophe in your family name? When you were saying Happy New Year from the Joneses, or whatever you should be. One, two, three. B, B, A, you should not have the apostrophe. So, Jennifer and Sarah get it. Woo. Good job. <laughs> I'm sure if we're talking about point, Happy right? New Year from Carl's Pet Chinchilla, yes, there would be a possessive apostrophe there. People get that one wrong all the time. It's what neighborhood brawls are made of. Apostrophes are big these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this one might be the trickiest question I'm throwing at you guys all night. When your kid uses the word literally correctly, <laughs> should you say, A, I couldn't be more proud? Or should you say, I couldn't be prouder? Hardest question of the day. One of them is actually correct. Should you say, A, I couldn't be more proud? Or B, I couldn't be prouder. Carl's listening for audience suggestions here. <laughs> I'll take suggestions. I know, crickets, crickets, so crickets. Should I, should I say one more so time? should they, you say, I couldn't be more proud, A, or B, I couldn't be prouder? 50-50 shots, that's good odds. <laughs> no, All right, what do you think? B, B, A, I couldn't be prouder, or B is the correct answer. Oh, man. Did you know that when you were adding that Proud ER the onto a word, no if it has You're two syllables or I'm one syllable, it's away. always that's add ER. Flag, so that's so proud, <laughs> one syllable, add the well, ER. The oh, there are a couple well, exceptions well, to this rule. I see some people grimacing really here saying, well, what about uh, best and worst and all of these other things? But if it is proud, Fast, yeah. any sort of one syllable word, it's always just add the ER. Subtle things, no one cares about this except for me, but just so you know. <laughs> okay, audience, let's see how we're doing. Sarah has a lead. All right, audience question, uh oh. Technical difficulties over here. Okay, Sarah does have a lead. Does have a lead. Wait a minute. So we're I got that one wrong, didn't I? Is that right? Audience, how are we doing? Is that score right? Yes. Okay. 
All right, so audience, Jennifer's looking for some points here. <laughs> Carl's looking for some points here. Maybe you're fighting for Sarah. Audience, we have all pled guilty to typos in the past. Or have we all pleaded guilty oh. to typos in the past? Pleaded, pleaded correct answer, right. sir. Yeah. Yeah. We are watching language history change in this moment. Who thought it was pled? To be honest, who thought it was pled? There are a couple people. Pled, you see it on TV, you see it in movies, you see it everywhere, but it's not actually the correct form of the verb. Who would you like to give your point to, sir? Well, to keep the race interesting, player one. Jennifer. Oh, yeah, thank you. All right. But actually, the new Sarah's husband years ago, so I attempted to give it to her. Oh. <laughs> I'll have to tell him that. <laughs> he cost He's going to cause me to lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more for the audience. If you were not interested in something, would you say that you couldn't care less or you could care less? I heard in the back, right there. I could care less. Incorrect. I couldn't care less, meaning you could not physically care less than you care right now. You already care so little. If you love something, you could care less. It would be possible. So, yeah. <laughs> You could not care less, meaning, yep, that's one again. We see incorrect all the time. The correct version is, I couldn't care less. Good try, though. Thank you for being brave, audience. Okay, last one of this round. Back to my panel. If you're the first to embrace a new technology, are you an early adapter or an early adopter? My daughter will never talk to me again if I get this one wrong. <laughs> Are you an early adopter or early adapter? Oh, wait a minute. Did I reverse it? Excuse me. Early adapter A, early adopter B. What do you think? Are you ready? B, 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 all correct. You're adopting the technology. If you were adapting the technology, that would mean you're in, the, in your garage tweaking things. You're adapting it. Good. Thank you. Okay, so at the end of round two, it is anybody's game. Jennifer is sitting at 10, Sarah at 11, Carl at 9. Still anybody's game. Now at, at 10, excuse me, at 12 months old, babies are already beginning to recognize adjacent, adjacent relationships in words. How words come together to mean different things at 12 months old. Now this learning process obviously lasts a lifetime. Bless you. Um, and how language fits together to organize itself, listening, speaking, writing, it takes a lot of pra practice. The English language is not always logical. That's because much of Old English came from the North Germanic languages spoken by the Scandinavians in the 8th and 19th centuries from the influences of the conquering Normans. That's because Early modern English, think the language of Shakespeare, came again from Scandinavia and France and Germany and Roman and Greek influences. The English language is a mess. I'm the first to completely agree to that. And that's before totes, awesome sauce, and hashtag OMG, of course. <laughs> okay, so here's an audience question that is a no pressure question. You will get a free copy of Get a Grip on Your Grammar if you get this correct. So, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, how many definitions are there to the word set, S-E-T? Wow. Wow. Keep guessing. 21. Keep guessing lower. Uh -huh. <laughs> 620. No. <laughs> Uh, somebody say nine in the back. I heard swear I heard nine. Right there. Right there. Yes, there are nine different uh, definitions of the word mm. set. That is the word in the English language that has the most definitions. You can really? set something down. You can set your fantasy football lineup. You can wait for the glue to set. You can collect the full set. You can set a fire. Nine different versions hmm, of the word set. And the microphone will not let me travel. Could my lovely assistant, the shorter pile? Thank you. I'm really enjoying calling my husband my lovely assistant. You can pass that back that way. Thank you.
<clears throat> All right, round three of four. Contestants, are you ready? Oh yeah. I think you have this one. Round three, so number one, how do you spell the word through? As in traveling through time. How do you spell the word through if you're traveling through time? Where's spell check on this? <laughs> I'm hearing the audience help you out here. Everybody got it? Okay. One, two, three, turn. Yeah, I mean, what else could it Yeah, it's not a trick question. Good job. Everybody gets a point. T H R O U G H. So often, spell check won't help with things like this when you have two T O, T W O, T O O, through. All of them are actually correct forms of these words. Spell check won't always help you, so that's where we have to pay attention. How do you spell the word definitely? Definitely. This is my favorite word I think I ever see misspelled because spell check does try to help you with this one. And they always correct it, if you're close enough, to the word defiantly. <laughs> when I used to teach, and this was something that appeared in thesis statements, it was my favorite thing. I almost gave A's just because of a typo because people defiantly believed. <laughs> oh, huzzah! Let's do it. Definitely. Correct, correct. Correct, wait. Definitely, definitely not sure if I have wait. it right. <laughs> no. Sorry. You're going down, buddy. I was Close. definitely not sure if I had it right. Definitely, D-E-F-I-N. <laughs> See, now I'm getting nervous. D-E-F-I-N-I-T-E-L-Y. Oh, Definitely. Carl got it wrong. That was a good try, though. This is why we have spell check, but spell check is not always our friend unless you want to defiantly believe things, which honestly I am all for. Okay, how do you spell the word busyness? How do you spell the word busyness? I love the rumblings. It's getting intense. All right, when everybody's ready, turn. Yes, yes, no. almost. <laughs> With a Y. With an I, it's business. Oh, of course it is. But I did it that because way. Because everyone has so. the thought that was just had up here on this panel that busyness <laughs> should have an I. But wait, that word is business. Yes. That word is already taken. So no, busyness I is actually no, with a Y, I have which. No business with this busyness. You're just going to have to creep out of here. <laughs> okay, one more question for my panel before I'm turning this back to my audience. How do you spell free reign? If you have free reign to do whatever you want, uh, maybe anything but your spelling. <laughs> How would you spell free reign? Is this ours or theirs? If I was an artist. I'd... All right. Oh, wait. We can't One, lie. two, three, turn. Carl got it. <laughs> Yes, 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 we all have it correct. R-E-I-N, free reign. Think about horses. The horses have free reign. It's not about royalty, where people always think, and it's definitely not about anything falling from the sky. Good, fabulous. Okay, number five, last question before I'm tossing it back to the audience. How do you spell overdue with please stop overdoing it with these spelling questions? <laughs> Don't overdo it with these spelling questions. How do you spell overdue? You ask us this in a library. Yes. I know. <laughs> the trick question. I'm not talking about library books. There's your hint. All right, one, two, three. D-O, D-O. Oh. <laughs> overdue. Ah, Don't be overdoing it. I know the library part is the trickiest part. We are here in a library today. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's a genetic thing. All right, so going into the audience question here. This one takes some bravery. What is the plural of mongoose? Mongooses. 
I heard that from a whole lot of people saying mongooses, which is correct. No one said mongoose. Who said that first? Yes, ma'am. Who would you like to give your point to? I think so. Jennifer. Jennifer. Aww. Thank Aww. you. Nice to have fans. <laughs> All done. All right, oh, audience. Now we're tied. Here's uh -oh. one more for you. It's tense. Think of Carl. He needs you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you spell forward, as in the forward of a book? Boy, I have Oh, that's not bad. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know this is where it gets tricky with our volunteers. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Oh, nice. Hey. F-O-R-E-W-O-R-D, which is different from forward momentum. Two different spellings. Yes, ma'am, who would you like to give your point to? Player one. <laughs> Jennifer just took the lead from the audience. Now that's Thank not you. fair. <laughs> <laughs> I protest. <laughs> <laughs> There are 132 business emails sent, or excuse me, 132 billion business emails sent every single day. There are 1.9 billion Facebook accounts. Think about all the words we put down every single day. This is not just for the storytellers among us. This is not just for those who wake up at 3 a.m. with burning grammar thoughts on their minds. Do you realize the first known use of OMG was actually in a 1917 letter to Winston, Winston Churchill? Close, oh man, Winston Churchill, close. I looked it up, I found, you can go online and find a, it's Winston Churchill, it's Winston Churchill, it's Winston Churchill, Yes, but he says OMG, and then he puts in parentheses, by that, of course, I mean. <laughs> so it's explained. Winston Churchill was not expected to understand this abbreviation in a letter. But yes, 1917. And when you think about it, are emojis really that far off from Egyptian hieroglyphs? Yes and no. There's a time and place, obviously, for abbreviations, for symbols like this. And as I like to tell my college freshmen, this place is not in your essay. <laughs> and as I like to tell my business writing clients today, these OMGs and smiley faces are not designed for your business correspondence. And on that note, another audience question for a free get a grip on your grammar. In a new study published in the journal Social, Psychological, and Personality Science, something that does not roll off my tongue, researchers found that when writers use this in their emails, readers, especially in professional settings, were given the impression that the writer was less competent. When they stuck this into their emails, what was it? Any guesses? What was that? I agree with you, but that's not the finding of the study. <laughs> Smiley faces, <laughs> smiley faces. Studies have been done that if you think you are just setting a friendly, friendly tone, you're actually making yourself look a little bit less professional. No. Perfect, thank you very much. First answer, was the first guess exclamation point? The first guess, guess was exclamation yeah. points, which I completely I agree with. all the time. Well. We all yeah. sometimes just get overly excited about things and want to put them all over the place. But we kind of need to hold back sometimes. If I have a mission in the world today, it's to enable us to think before we communicate, before we speak, before we write, before we, are, we share our, our ideas with the masses, be those masses your children, your coworkers, your friends, or those following that trending hashtag on Twitter. It's important that we know James Brown's grammar is actually correct when he says, I feel good. It's important to know the bread bedtime prayer slash Sophie B. Hawkins song, as I lay me down to sleep, is also correct. It's essential to master the difference between two, the number, two in regards to a sense of place, and two meaning also. It's essential that we realize women is a noun, not an adjective. So we should stop talking about women astronauts, women scientists, women athletes, and if you're looking for that descriptor, to use that wonderful adjective female, and that is, of course, if a descriptor is needed at all. Hint, obviously, with that one, oftentimes it's not. Now diving into our final round. Carl, there's still hope. 
You can get back. I just want to get to 14. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are rules and there are exceptions. We learned that before I before E except after C, but that rule actually only applies to 14 words. <laughs> More than 923 words in the English language actually do not follow that rule. <laughs> the 44 rule words are actually common words, that's why we learned that. But all of these simplifications don't actually work. All right, round four. Why should you, um, this is for my panel, and you know what, for this last round, we're going to mix things up a little bit. This one is going to be a question for each of you, and you'll have a chance to just opine <laughs> with whatever you believe. So this first one's for Jennifer. Why should you never write please RSVP? Uh, mm. Or you can say pass. Oh. <laughs> pass will just be a, a zero point, but. Because the word please is in RSVP, in the French mm -hmm. phrase. My French is terrible, so I will not grace you with that, but RSVP actually stands for respond if you please. So every time you write please RSVP, you're actually being incredibly redundant. You're not actually being polite. Good, point for Jennifer. Sarah, why should you never write advance planning? Well, because planning is done in advance. Right. Point for Sarah, this is one of those expressions you see, and especially in business correspondence, talk about the advanced planning for something. When else do you plan except for in advance? You can't plan <laughs> after the fact. Thank you, Sarah. Carl, why should you never write irregardless? Because it's wrong. Yes, <laughs> simple answer, it is not a word. Points for Carl. <laughs> Okay, Jennifer. <laughs> that sounds like a softball to me. <laughs> Jennifer, what is an editor's concern with the phrase, she was thinking to herself? Why would an editor be concerned about this phrase, she was thinking to herself? <laughs> Uh-oh, I use that all the time. Now, but now that you think, now that you mention it, <laughs> who else would you be thinking to? Aha! Yeah. Who else would you be thinking to? Exactly. As an editor of fiction, this is a phrase that I have to tell people to strike all the time because who else is it possible to think to? Now, of course, this is a 2017 answer. Perhaps at 2020 you will be thinking to your computer and your robot, so maybe in the future we will have this be something valid. But yes, every time you want to write think to yourself, strike it. You just think. You can't think to anybody else at the moment. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> Why should you hesitate before writing in all caps? All capital letters. Unless you're writing a book title. Well, it's grammatically incorrect. I mean, words don't come in all caps. Right, right, it's not a matter of stress. It comes across as yelling, it's not actually correct. Thank you very much, points for Sarah. These are the little tweaky things. Caps should not be used for emphasis. Caps should be used maybe to put a title out there, but caps usually comes across as yelling. It's not a stress. So good, thank you. And Carl. <laughs> Looking at my next question. If you're seeing your in-laws this Thanksgiving and your spouse has two sisters, what's the plural of sister-in-law? Sisters-in-law. Sisters-in-law, Carl gets the point, good. <laughs> Everybody always wants to say sister-in-laws. That's not right, sisters-in-law. Same thing with passerby, passers-by is the correct version of that. Okay, audience. Again, you can give your point to anyone. Do I have a volunteer? Okay, going to anyone. <laughs> if you have a meeting every single Monday, is it a reoccurring meeting or is it a recurring meeting? I heard recurring over here, which is absolutely correct. Yes, ma'am. A reoccurring thing happens again and again, but not on a strict schedule. Recurring is something that happens on a schedule. Why didn't it? So if you have a meeting every single Monday, that's a recurring meeting, not a reoccurring meeting. Perhaps thunderstorms are reoccurring in the springtime, but they're not recurring, unless you're writing fantasy and there's a whole other world building, building element there. Okay, so who would you like to give your point to? Carl. Carl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you. Hey, you 14. I'm at 14. Good job. 
And the last question of the day. Audience, if your friend couldn't attend today's event and they sent you a note, should they have written that they regretfully couldn't attend or that they regrettably couldn't attend? Yes, sir. Pardon me? Do you have another guess? <laughs> Regretfully is the correct answer. Thank you for trying, though, because everyone gets a mistake on that one. These are two different words, regretfully and regrettably. Regretfully means you are full of regret. It is an idea. It is an emotion. Something is regrettable when it is an action. So there is a difference. When you're t telling someone it's really you regretfully can't attend, it's something that you feel in your heart. It's regretfully. All right, so at the end, oh, Jennifer just squeaks out with the win. <laughs> and Smarties for the Smarties. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm tossing this, excuse me, because the mic is coming with some interference here. I'm smart now. <laughs> Smarties. OK, and what happened to my drawing? Oh, it's still going around? Okay, so we will draw because we have some wonderful giveaways um, that our authors have shared here in a moment. Okay, and as right before we do that, actually, do that. Okay, as my lovely assistant, I'm enjoying saying that, is putting them in the bowl. First, a round of applause for today's contestants willing to be up here. Thank you so much for being here. We write because we have deadlines. We write because we want to share news with family and friends. We write because words maybe make us simultaneously giggle and blubber. We write because we have tiny beings called characters in our heads that are pounding their tiny fists to get out. We write because we, when we find words that work together, we want to marry them on a riverbank in June. We write because we have this odd habit of twisting words like licorice, tweaking, cajoling, poeticizing, intensifying, making simple sentences shine like new. We write because the world needs to know what we have to say. We write because we have to. I say it's time for us all to get a grip on our grammar, <laughs> to wrap our minds around our language use, and if we can, that is what I call Grammartopia. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. I'm concerned about interference. We have three giveaways of Jennifer's books. So, thank you. You know what? I'm gonna have. Yeah, sure. Hold. Yeah, I was thinking of having Jennifer do it, but my mic interference is having issues. Um, you want me to grab it? Not a fair. I had to hand this to you and walk away before there are issues. Woo. Okay. <laughs> Jennifer, who would you like to give your books to today? Uh, I would like to give a book to Robert McDuffie. Robert McDuffie, Yay. right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Maybe that's Not me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay, Jennifer, one more. Oh, one more. Two more. Two more, excuse me. Okay. Um, Carolyn White. Carolyn White in the back row over here. <laughs> and Don Levy. Don Levy. Don. 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 <laughs> okay, fabulous. And Sarah's going to give away his three as well. Now, whoever gets mine. Come up here and give me your address, because I'm going to have to mail it to you. I didn't bring them with me. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. All right, and you can draw your three. Oh. <laughs> so these three people come meet Sarah after the show. Peggy Hardy. Peggy. In front row. Clark. 
Claire Rogan, Reagan? Claire Reagan. Ruth. Ruth. Just Ruth. Uh -huh. Right here. Okay. So you three, please come see Sarah after the show. And Carl has some giveaways, too. All right. Oh, thank um, you. In my mind, this is complicated by the fact that they're so very different. Mm. Shall I let somebody choose after I pull their name? However you would like to I will let somebody choose after they pull their name. And I will know their name. Pat Leahy. And you can go ahead and keep pulling names. Those are, those are the first two of a trilogy. This is um, an adventure story, and this is a book on creativity. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Mary Reed. Mary Reed. And Christine Stakowitz. Perfect. Did I get that right? No. Yeah. It was the first two of a trilogy, and this is an adventure story. Again, thank you for our wonderful panel. Thank you all for being here today. We do have some book sales in the back taking and taking orders for others. I wouldn't want you to. Thank you all for being here today. <laughs> thank you, Chris, and thank you to everyone for coming and having a good grammar time. We have questions for you. Is it uh, biannual or biennial? It happens every two years. Oh, man. Yeah. Biannual. You can, Bi you can, it's biannual. Bi Bi oh, you're getting nervous. <laughs> you can email me that's the answer. See, the beautiful thing yes. is, I, mail you book. I have written this book, but my biggest thing is it's not about perfection. No one gets this stuff right all the time. So I honestly encourage people to stump me this with this stuff because it reminds me of things that I knew a week ago. I knew this morning before I was standing up on stage. Yeah. But I encourage that. And also on chrisfizek.com, my website, I still continue that grammar blog that I started back in 2012 where I still have that weekly blog answering these questions. So I encourage you, come check it out. Ask me your questions. I'll have that up for you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have time to do an evaluation form, we'd appreciate it. Um, any other questions? Do you want to try and stump her? <laughs> you can. I have a question. Sure. Okay, no disrespect. You were talking about 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Yes, sir. And you used the term exact same. Oh. <laughs> Well done, sir. Well done, sir. If you read my book, I apparently called myself out in my own book about never ever using this phrase, exact same, because it is redundant and it would be foolish to say such a thing. Excellent. Well done, sir. Again, none of us are perfect. Thank you. It's so true. There's no such thing of being very unique. You're either unique or you're not unique. There's no, yes, or very identical or very dead. These you either are or you aren't. Thank you. Thank you for that for me. I appreciate it. Another round of applause, please, for Christian.